I'm a goofy goober. Rock. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was a big success. Reviewed positively, sold well enough to get those ugly labels slapped onto the box, and over time garnered a really solid following. Full-blown remakes don't come out of nowhere after all, enough people gotta show love to the original. But with an obvious hit on their hands, Heavy Iron Studios had to be brought back to make another game starring the sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea. And it's a movie tie-in game as well. By all accounts, this should be an absolute disaster. A video game based on a movie based on a cartoon. Do the math, it all adds up to this being a train wreck. The thing is though, whenever Battle for Bikini Bottom is in the conversation, the movie game is sure to follow soon after. It was made by the same developers, it only released about a year or so later. It shouldn't be possible, but we may actually have a hit on our hands. From what I recall, the movie was pretty good. I remember really liking it. And if you were interested in the game at the time, you were probably in one of two different camps. You either got the game after enjoying the movie, a common trend for any media tie-in video game, or you bought the game day one and spoiled the plot of the entire movie before watching it because it was released weeks beforehand. Excuse me, what? Either way, since this game is technically a sequel to Battle for Bikini Bottom, it is still interesting looking at this as a standalone game, not associated with a movie. Movie. Let's take all the good stuff we did when we made a platformer based on the world of Bikini Bottom as well as including a bunch of references, and now try to do the same thing but with a feature length film. Neat. Oh, and like last time, what about the Spongebob movie game on PC? Still, no, point and clicks don't really do it for me, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, but what about the GBA version? Listen, it's gonna take a few therapy sessions to look at a portable Spongebob game and not get war flashbacks to Legend of the Lost Spatula. Oh my god, Mrs. Puff, what happened? But, you know what they say, when in doubt, pinky out. Maybe this one is the one for me. Alright, the Spongebob movie game on consoles. Let's dive on in. Ooh, hold up, promotional materials? Ah. Oh, Jimmy Neutron, Fairly Odd Parents, Avatar was close to premiering, it wasn't on TV yet. Whoa! Whenever games include something like this, it's like I'm traveling back in time. 2004, back when only the second season of SpongeBob was about to release on DVD, and Tack was a thing. Oh, the memories. So the plot follows that of the movie. Surprise, surprise. The weird thing, though, is just how that story is being told. There are far more in-game cutscenes than last time, which is really cool. I really love how these characters and worlds look and interact with each other. It's great stuff. But on the other hand, there's also a lot of cutscenes that are these weird series of snapshots from the movie with, like, Windows Movie Maker transition effects. It gets the job done, I guess, but it seems really weird for some scenes to have work done to them and some to not. A few of the pictures here aren't even from the movie, they just slapped together a bunch of clip art in Photoshop and called it a day. Older movie games had straight up clips from the movie to string the game along. What is Spongebob's excuse? Well, at least the voice of Mr. Krabs is on point this time, which is awesome, considering how weird it was back in Battle for Bikini Bottom. Sad to say though, David Hasselhoff didn't receive the same fate. You see, Mr. Hoff had a pretty substantial part in the movie, but I guess because he's a big deal or something, in the game he's replaced by... Oh. Oh, that ain't Hasselhoff. To spare you from going over the entire story of the film. Essentially, Spongebob is depressed after not becoming the manager of the hot new sequel to the original, The Krusty Krab 2. As he drowns his sorrows with Patrick over a ton of ice cream, Plankton steals the crown of King Neptune, frames Mr. Krabs for it, and begins taking over the entirety of Bikini Bottom as our Sponge and Starfish hero duo go on a manly adventure to return the crown to its rightful owner. Luckily, the story is simple enough to where it converts into in-between level plot points fairly easily. A lot of the movie is just a road trip between two bros reacting to whatever pit stops they make along the way, clearly being the influence behind Final Fantasy XV. It feels like most of the movie was covered here in ways that make sense, and that's really all you can ask for. It's inherently not as appealing as exploring the entire world independent of being associated with an already existing episode or movie, but hey, we got cutscenes of a 3D SpongeBob model being drunk. I think that makes up for it. There's also a new animation of SpongeBob being scared, and it's absolutely terrifying. Okay, yeah, this is more Battle for Bikini Bottom, all right. I can already understand why these two games are usually in the same conversation now. It plays, like, exactly the same. The biggest difference with this game is how the levels are laid out. While Battle for Bikini Bottom was a collectathon, giving you sizable worlds to explore with eight golden spatulas spread throughout them as rewards for different challenges, the movie game is far more linear. You book it from point A to point B, deal with a few enemy obstacles and platforming challenges along the way, you get a goofy goober token or two by the end, 
and you move on. While it may seem like a bit of a downgrade going from a sandbox to not that, I'm actually totally cool with this. It's a change of pace. By doing this, it already allows the movie game to stand out a bit more from the last game shadow. I like it. I'm ready. Depression. This game really speaks to me. Yeah, the platforming is quite alright. Nothing mind-blowing, but jumping around is fun, attacking enemies is enjoyable. You do lack some of the abilities you have at the end of Battle for Bikini Bottom at the start of this one, but you unlock slight variations of them over time, and there's even an upgrade system on top of that. By collecting enough barbells to level up your manly meter, you can pick and choose where upgrade points go. And these improvements actually feel like they're useful. Initially, I thought this idea was pretty forced, but it actually turned out to be a worthwhile addition. Oh boy, look at my man go. If anything comes off as a downgrade though, it's that you can only play as Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry, as opposed to having Sandy as an option as well. It makes sense, she didn't have that strong of a role in the actual movie, but still. She was my favorite in the last game. It's because of the swinging. Primarily just that. Luckily, that mechanic is still present, you just use Patrick's tongue on floating ice cubes instead. It feels just as good to use, but I'm gonna miss the conveniently placed floating Texas symbols, not gonna lie. And while this is definitely a more linear experience, exploration is still a thing. Typically, you'll run into a few extra trinkets and unlockables this way, but for the most part, you are always going exactly down the path the game wants you to. The bulk of your options lie in these wide plethora of challenges that end up taking place on these really randomly placed squares, conveniently sitting off there to the side. You got Monkey Ball-esque rolling challenges, Mario Sunshine-inspired platforming and weirdly colored voids, enemy gauntlets that can be quite a challenge until the last one where they just troll us with a single jellyfish. That honestly caught me off guard. I felt very weird about that. Going through a series of rings, who doesn't love a good old fashioned ring challenge? That would be me. I don't love a good old fashioned ring challenge. I especially enjoyed jumping around in this one because the background started spinning out of control and it made me almost vomit. So, you know, that was... Oh boy, that was ooh, fun. And alongside the handful of platforming stages, there are sliding levels as well, reminiscent of the same mechanic from the last game, and driving levels where you control the paddy wagon. All these years later, that name is still amazing. And I actually really like this. There's still a matter of testing your reflexes to get from point A to point B in one piece, so I think they fit. That being said though, there is a problem and it comes from needing to play through all of these stages so many damn times to get more and more tokens. You will often jump into a new main level and get told that you can't progress until you get a new skill, which you can't get until you have enough tokens. So the quickest way to do that is to do the extra missions in the sliding and driving stages. You already did the level normally, now do it under a time limit. Now go through the rings. Now do it in a tighter time limit. I think we've jumped through enough hoops for you, Mindy. Then how about jumping through rings? instead. Mindy, you suck! And some of the things they expect you to do in the final time trial challenge is insane! I'm pulling off these ridiculous shortcuts here, and I'm still just kinda short of the time needed. They're also prone to glitches too, so that's nice. Here's me in a perpetual jump, so it's impossible to finish the slide. Good stuff. Most of the time, I love challenges like this. Mario and Sonic games have these things all the time. The thing is though, in those games, they're optional, a means to complete the game 100%, but not necessary to see the game's ending. Here though, you definitely have to do at least some of them in order to simply beat the game. And I think it is safe to say, it's pretty dumb. Oh. Oh, this is like that scene from the Titanic, right? The boss battles are unfortunately lacking as well. They're not bad, just incredibly simplistic and super short. The bosses in Battle for Bikini Bottom had you use each of the characters' abilities in pretty interesting ways, so... What happened here? I know we gotta stick to Dennis on Hasselhoff's hairy back because it's canon to the movie, and saying that out loud was pretty weird honestly, but it still feels like they didn't try to make something good out of these. You lay on a bunch of hits, move on. Now I know I'm doing a bit of complaining, specifically when compared to the more universally liked Battle for Bikini Bottom, but can you really blame me? That game was the result of taking a chance, implementing tried and true platforming mechanics in a world of SpongeBob SquarePants, and obviously it did well for them. And when you're pushing through the main adventure here, it's still pretty good. So why am I suddenly forced to replay missions with strict guidelines and deal with underwhelming bosses? That wasn't a thing last time, and it's not like people were asking for it. The SpongeBob movie game did release only a year after Battle for Bikini Bottom, after all, and it was made to tie in with the movie's release, so... Maybe this was rushed? 
It's still a quality movie tie-in game, so that's remarkable in and of itself. It's not as if it poisoned the water supply, burned the crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses, but we're also technically talking about a platformer sequel here. I can't say for certain, and it's not as if it's lacking in quality, but decisions like these definitely make it seem like it needed more time for polish that they weren't afforded because they had a strict deadline to meet by their orange slimy overlords. Also, the total number of tokens only reaches 68. You guys were one away from the funny number, man, come on! At least the final boss is kinda decent. It goes on for way too long, but it's at least based on timing your jumps and attacks in a more precise manner, so... It's nice. The Goofy Goober theme plays halfway through as well, so credit where credit's due, that's pretty cool. After all is said and done, we're treated to another slideshow with poorly thrown together graphics, go through the credits, and then you get sent back to World 1. Wow, that's really anticlimactic. You don't even get anything special for collecting everything. One additional cutscene and a handful of minor extras, so... Huh. So, beating the game doesn't really feel like much of an accomplishment. Completing it doesn't really get you much of a reward. But their journey from point A to point B is still really fun, so... That puts the movie game in a bit of a weird place. I may not have played every single Spongebob game out there, but after Battle for Bikini Bottom, the one that every series fan can get behind, I went into this game expecting it to still be good, but not as good. And yeah, that is basically what I got. We ultimately still have an enjoyable 3D platformer here, with enough polish to make it a worthwhile adventure for Spongebob fans and platformer fans alike. It's not awesome, and it probably won't get the same rehydrated treatment since it is still based on an older movie, but it's still a good time. Alright, so I guess I'm reviewing a bunch of Spongebob games now, huh? Well, okay, we'll return to the land of Bikini Bottom soon enough. Rehydrated comes out pretty soon, so that's as good a time as any to make that return. After that, I mean, we've already covered two of the games. There can't possibly be that much more. I know there's a couple people talk about, but they really can't be... Oh. Oh, there's like ten plus more. I did this to myself.